Okay, so let me back this up a little bit. Are you on here? Yeah. Up here? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're on chapter 29. This is Seabirds. And uh, I just talked about, um, before we started filming, all the different types of seabirds that there are. And uh, you know what that one is right there? Does anyone know? It's a pelican. It's a pelican. Did I say that? I think I said that. Would you have known if I didn't say it? Yeah, I would have. Um, so uh, these birds all live around the ocean, spend a majority of their time in, around salt water, so we call them seabirds. And they're part of marine biology. Um, what's the deal with seabirds? What makes them different about other types of birds? Well, generally, they live longer than other birds. Seabirds can live for a real long time. Why is that? Decades. Um, that's a good question. Often they're bigger, so that if you're if you're big, it takes you a long time to grow to that size, and then you have to find somebody to reproduce with, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so also, if you're spread out by long distances, which often you are on the ocean, it may take you a while to find a mate, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, these sorts of things uh, add into making your life be longer. They breed later. They invest a great deal of time in their young. Seabirds usually care for their young a lot more than maybe other birds would. Although all birds care for their young some. They usually nest in colonies. They live in big groups. And we'll talk about the colonies in a little bit. Most seabirds have webbed feet, have webbing between their digits. That helps them push themselves along in the ocean, in the water. They also have salt glands. So the salt glands are usually located here above the eyes. And the salt glands will squirt salt. And it often comes out of their little nostrils. Now there are special types of birds called tube noses that have these tube looking nostrils. And you'll often see white salt crystals coming out of those tube nostrils, running down the bird's beak. and dripping off salt. And you sometimes you'll see white along their beaks. So they have, uh, in, in alligators and um, turtles, where did the salt come from? Do y'all remember? Yeah. Their, their eyes. eyes. Their, eyes. Eye their eyes, yeah, their eyes. And in these, it comes out their nose from glands on top. But some somehow, if you live around the ocean, you gotta get rid of that salt. You're taking in a lot of salt. Every time you drink water, every time you eat, you're swallowing a lot of salt. You gotta get rid of it. These glands collect it from the blood and squirt it out. We call that osmoregulation when you're regulating your salt content. Seabirds uh, usually have really thick plumage. Um, they need to be protected from the coldness of the water. And usually the plumage is waterproof, so that water never actually reaches their skin. It is kind of repelled. Um, they have oils that they can take from an oil gland and put onto their feathers. They usually have an oil gland on their stomach or on their back that they can reach back and get some oil and then wipe it on their feathers. Have you ever seen birds kind of messing with their feathers a lot? Yeah. A lot of times they're putting oil on it, they're straightening it out their feathers. And um, you may have heard the expression, it's like water off a duck's back. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that? Slides right off. When the bird goes into the water, the water, you can just see it slide right off. It doesn't like stick to the bird. Most seabirds have um, waterproof plumage that is real thick, keeps them warm. Um, they usually aren't very colorful. Um, often when you're out at sea, you're hunting for things. Fish and that sorts of things is what most of these eat. And so if you're going to hunt for them, you better be camouflaged, or they'll see you coming. So most of these birds are pretty drab. You can see the counter shading, white on the stomach, dark on the back. That's just like uh, lots of fish have. So if you're looking from the water and you look up, if you see this bird coming, you're going to see its white stomach. And the sky is kind of lighter color, so you won't be able to see it. And if you're another bird and you're going to eat this bird and you're looking down at it from above, you see dark on its back, the same as the dark as the water. 
you're not going to be able to see them very well. You see what I'm saying? So we call that counter shading. Oh, also, another thing the birds will do that you might see them do at the beach or something to keep warm, they'll hold one leg up like this and keep it real close to their feathers and their body, which is warm. Birds are endothermic, by the way. Do you know what endothermic means? Produce heat. Warm body temperature. They keep a high body temperature. They keep in heat with their feathers, and so their body temperatures are high, often higher than ours. They might go higher than 98.6. And, um, and they keep their body real warm. And so um, if they want to warm their legs up, they'll hold a leg up against their body. You might see bir uh, birds at the beach or something that look like they only have one leg. They probably have two legs. It's the other leg is held up next to their body. They're getting it warm. And once that one gets warm enough, they'll, they'll do the other one. You ever notice birds like that? They're one-legged birds, they look like. These uh, birds, ocean birds, usually eat fish. And um, there's different ways they do it. There's one, one way, it's called pursuit diving, which is what, um, what uh, a lot of ducks will do it, but um, penguins will do it where they swim under the water and use their web feet and their wings to push them through the water and catch fish under the water. And um, we call that pursuit diving when you're actually swimming. These, a lot of these birds can swim for a short distance. And penguins, of course, can swim for a long distance. They're very well adapted to it. Um, some birds like this, uh, I'm not sure what kind of bird that is. Um, it's doing what's called plunge diving. They start from real high up, and they just plunge down into the water. I think that might be a booby. Yeah, they dive bomb. And they can see, they have real good vision, and they can see the fish It's a few feet underwater. They can get, sometimes go down six or eight feet, they've been measured. And you can think of that, that's almost from the ceiling down, if there's a fish. It can plunge in and just go right through the water and snag the fish. Pretty amazing. And then it floats back up to the top, and because of its waterproof uh, feathers, it doesn't get waterlogged. It would be bad, wouldn't it? If it got waterlogged, then it wouldn't be able to fly very easily. It'd be too heavy. So these birds have to stay light. Um, and so a lot of a lot of the birds feed by plunge diving. And then there's another thing, kleptoparasites. You know what klepto means? Have you ever heard klepto before? Somebody's a kleptomaniac? What Stealing. does that mean? Stuff they, steal. they steal. Beans. A lot of these birds steal from other birds. Or from fit or from whatever they can steal from. Um, they steal from you if you if you ever been to the beach and um, you have a picnic basket there, a bird might come down and grab something out of it. Um, these birds will steal from each other. There's a famous bird called the frigate bird. I might have a picture of it. Um, I'll see I'll, Took a lot of pictures of these birds in the Galapagos, but they call it the frigate bird because it's like a pirate, a frigate. Have you ever heard of a ship called a frigate? And that's a fast pirate ship that comes up and, and shoots up another ship and jumps on it and steals stuff from it and then leaves. That's what frigate birds do. They just go around all day looking for birds that have gotten some food. Maybe a bird dives in the water and is carrying a fish away and the frigate bird will come grab it from it, steal it. Well, that's kleptoparasitism. Isn't that a good name? That's a good science name, Grace. Kleptoparasitism. Can you all say kleptoparasitism? Kleptoparasitism. Great word. You want to see video footage? Yes. Video. Yes. See, it's the Sunny Channel. Hold on. I have Tom Willis video footage. Filmed by me. No way. Hey, keep that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm still in class. Here we go. Yeah, it's like a This is not quite as dramatic. See? Shell water. 
That was the boat we stayed on. This was in the Galapagos. Straight down, like 